Hi everyone. Hi. It, hi. <laughs> it's Kim and Jennifer from Fleece and Harmony Woolen Mill in coming to you from beautiful downtown Belfast, Prince Edward Island. <laughs> we don't really have a downtown. If we did, this would be it. Yeah, we have a general store and a crossroad. It's a gas station. Yeah, and a and gas, gas station. station. Yeah. And a post office. Yeah. Yeah. It's downtown. Yeah. Urban. Urban rural. <laughs> so uh, we would say urban, except that you may hear a buzzing of the chainsaw in the background while we're recording this today because our um, we have a, a local guy that comes and cuts and splits our wood for winter and he's here today. Yay! That's very good news. Yeah. One day in the month that he couldn't come and, and this, or couldn't come, he, that it would be uh, disruptive to the podcast. <laughs> and here, here he is today. We're not. We're not sure uh, that you'll really hear it. But then again, we weren't sure if you were going to hear Jeremy either. Yeah, probably yeah. hear, but I don't think it's going to be yeah. super distracting. We'll no. try to talk really, articulate very well. well. No, no, this is, will be well, distinct. No, we'll we'll just be louder. Okay. <laughs> so we uh, laugh at the chainsaw. <laughs> Should be easy. Yes. <laughs> He's kind of way over on another side of the farm, but we can we can hear him from here. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful day here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we'll talk about that. So you're watching this if you're right on the button when we launch the launch the podcast. You're watching it on October twenty fifth, two thousand and nineteen. And today we have an interview with um, another alpaca farmer, actually, this one from Nova Scotia. And we actually have finished objects. As you can tell. You might have noticed, although I have a little cheat to talk about on mine. And cheater. Cheater, yes. <laughs> so we'll just, uh, before we get started, because we actually have quite a long um, episode today because we have tons of Ask Us Anything questions. Um, I guess after I said that we didn't have anything last week, people right, got right on board in there. And if I don't specifically ask your question here, it's because I'm going to private message you because okay. uh, it was a that type of question. Unfortunately, there's not chatter on the Ask Us Anything uh, thing. So if you ask a question there that... Um, um, is more that should be handled one-on-one -on -one, then you'll get you'll get a message instead from us so it's not that we're not answering some of the questions and um, we'll ask you before we get started if you like the episode or any of the episodes that you've seen then you can uh, like uh, give us a thumbs up like mm -hmm. our like our video and subscribe we hit 3,000 mm -hmm. subscribers so we're, we're really excited. There was a, we were dancing for joy yeah. when we Can saw we that. Can we get five by Christmas? I don't know. Five thousand. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll five thousand by the new year. Come on, yeah. people. Yeah, Help yeah. Come on, come on. Um, so, uh, so that's it. So if this is your first time uh, joining us, welcome. And uh, like I said, we're on episode uh, 24, or maybe I didn't say that. Episode 24, mm -hmm. I can't believe it. Time, we say this every episode now. It's time is flying like crazy. And for those of you that are back, thanks for you, staying with us. Thanks for staying with us. And a lot of you have uh, done some binge watching and caught yeah. up. So we're really, that really, actually, we really love that when that happens. Yeah. So that's great. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get right to uh, get right to the point because uh, we've got kind of like I said, kind of a longish episode this time. So the farm update: um, everybody's growing. They're putting on fat for winter. Um, we did have a little patient over the last two weeks who is doing well. So um, it was really it was kind of funny. So sometimes if um, if a lamb gets uh, some kind of little bug or whatever, if they if they run a little bit of a fever. They can it can cause a break in their wool. Wool break. A wool break. That's it's called the technical term. <laughs> yes, and it's a disaster when you have it in the mill. If it happened in the middle and the it just made a weak spot in the in the fiber, which we actually dealt with that from uh, some fiber that we bought from another farm uh, this week, which is a disaster. I guess I should qualify that in the realm of disasters. <laughs> it's just a little bit of an inconvenience, I guess. <laughs> but if the uh, if it breaks enough i don't know i don't know what causes it but sometimes the the break can be bad enough that their new growth of wool actually pushes out the the wool that they have on their back so our lambs are were born in may so that's how many months old they are so they've got quite a quite a lot of uh, growth on there 
and um, we had a little lamb that was uh, that was sick who's recovered and fine but we had to put him in the barn just so we could watch him to make sure he was eating and peeing and all of that so they need a buddy when they're by themselves so the, there was this other lamb that we never knew he was it had anything wrong with him or there was didn't seem to be anything anyway he uh, his wool started falling out and there's no other no other cause for it except that he must have had a little something or other that we never noticed anyway he's naked now yeah well he's got a few more chunks to fall out <laughs> so it all all came out and it started to get cold so he was the perfect buddy for the one that wasn't feeling well except he's definitely not sick anymore he's pretty active in there and he's causing all kinds of uh, chaos jumping around and whatever anyway the two of them are happy there and uh, so now they're both fine but we can't put the now we can't put the uh the original one back outside because his friend is naked yeah so it's too cold for naked <laughs> too cold for naked at night so uh so they're still in the barn but his his wool is growing back pretty quickly so um he'll be uh fine to go out uh not in well in sh pretty short order so yeah anyway if not, we'll put a sweater on him yeah well <laughs> if you're wondering <laughs> we're not gonna knit it though he'll get a dog coat or yeah. something yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> anyway that'll he's be getting a mess. pretty fat in the barn yeah yeah anyway well you can see it more with no wool yeah it might not exactly. be fair to say that so those two little uh hooligans are uh in there <laughs> causing uh, havoc and yeah. running around and, and so just we never isolate a lamb no it's so okay. stressful for them they their prognosis becomes significantly worse yeah. if they're um, kept away from other like species yes. because yes. Uh, they're a flock animal and being solo is incredibly stressful for them yeah so we always give them a buddy and so it's yeah. just convenient that we had a bald buddy it's like who should we pick oh <laughs> like he's gonna freeze overnight. Yeah. yeah. So. so they're much more likely to recover if they have a friend. Yeah. Which is sweet, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. As with all things in life. Yeah. So <laughs> that's right. So the the one that was ill was actually we isolated him in a little pen because we weren't sure what was wrong with them or if it was you know what we weren't sure what it was and if it could be anyway once we we uh, understood that it was something that was not contagious we put the buddy in and he actually started to do much better quickly mm -hmm. when they, as soon as they have a buddy it's really we try to avoid like jennifer said solo as much as possible so that's kind of um that's kind of uh really what's happening on the farm our wood is being cut for winter and uh it's we're start, starting to really need we've had the wood stove on for a couple of weeks now but kind of like intermittently sort of but now it's really cold enough but uh, crisp fall days yeah that are beautiful frosty, two degrees yeah. at night maybe yeah, yeah exactly so that's going on so I think we should just get right to our finished object. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I was going to sit here and talk about my birds of a feather that was finished and not let on like there were any problems with finishing it, <laughs> but I decided that's not really authentic. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I'm wearing it. And uh, when, if I, if I take it off to show you uh, what I'm talking about, what I'm alluding to here, um, my black sweater is going to be completely covered with white mohair, but First couple things, I decided, uh, as you know, I didn't keep enough of the cashmere yarn for myself to actually finish this uh, shawl, and uh, so I knew I was gonna have to adapt the pattern. So I'm really bad at moving shapes in my mind. Complex geometry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving shapes in my mind. So I thought, and I didn't really read ahead and figure out exactly what it meant, but I have to say that the fact that um, this is really not a finished object was so should have been so obvious to even me in my limited abilities to spatially move whatever that is called. What's it called? I don't know. Spatial, spatial perception? Yeah, spatial okay. perception. Even me, I should have figured out what was going to happen, and I didn't. So, and then I decided that, um, this is cast off with a plain edge. I decided that I wanted to do this lovely Pico lace edge on the end of my shawl, which I did. Um, and then I spread out the shawl and was all ready to put it on and couldn't figure out a way to put it on that you couldn't see that I had cheated. 
on finishing it. And we should say this is uh, from the Waiting for Rain pattern by yeah. Sylvia McFadden. So this yes. is a bind off that she wrote into that pattern, which yeah. I did. And then you did it on your water too. I loved it. Yeah. I love this, this bind off. So yeah. thanks to Sylvia for, we learned for that. It. Yeah, we learned it from her uh, pattern. Yeah. So I still have an end here because the truth of the matter is, is that I love this shawl so much that I am going to rip out all of this edging that I did. And I think it's a five row bind off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It goes fast though. Yeah, it does go fast. You bind off um, three stitches for every, for every piece. Okay. Yeah. So it goes pretty fast, but it is, you know, 201 stitches worth of bind off in a five row lace pattern. Right. So I will do that because I'm going to show what happened when I spread out my shawl. Yeah, and I'm seeing it in real life without trying to read ahead and figure it out, and I still have no idea what you're talking about, so I actually don't okay. think it's that obvious. So um, what happens is you're working on this edge of the shawl. And what begins to happen, once you, this shawl has the full number of stitches on it, you the center spine, there's a center spine here that goes down the shawl, starts to move over towards this, this edge. So it was in the middle when you start, more or less. And then as you continue the shaping of the shawl, it moves out more closer to this, this outer edge here. So I cut it off with two sections left to go. And um, I thought, well, that'll be okay. And I wasn't really pull, holding it out and looking at it. Um, so what's happened is because I stopped it early, it creates a check mark. Can you see how that goes? It goes down to where yeah. the spine is. So the rest of the shawl that I should have knit fills in that check mark so that this becomes a, a point and then it's a straight edge um, till it joins here over here. This is a straight edge. You fill in this. Yes. Uh, so it makes I a see. triangular shawl okay. with the the uh, spine okay. going to the side. Triangle from this end to yeah. that corner you're yeah. holding. Yeah. Oh so wow. So it's like a check mark. Right. So that's two sections plus the border that um, that Andrea Mallory has put into this pattern, and the border is stripes of the of the two yarns that you're using. So I still have quite a lot of knitting to do, and um, this would have been quite a fatal error if I didn't have someone that could dye me some yarn. So the truth is, I don't have any of the original yarn left over. So I'm going to have to, that's why we told everybody that you need three balls. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you actually do need three. Um, I think we mentioned before, my tension is loose on this as well. So I've seen other people live ones that, um, that are smaller than mine. So I might've been able, if I would, had gone down a needle size, I might've been able to actually do it. But my idea of just cutting off the shawl early was uh, well, not a misinformed idea which I could have easily avoided if I had actually just looked at the projects, the finished projects on Ravelry, which I didn't do. I just saw the pattern in Lina and, uh, and then did it and then didn't think it through. But also there's no flat photo or schematic in the pattern to show you. Uh, it just looks like a triangle. Like it's, okay. not, it's not super clear. I would say if you just look at the pattern as it's written in um, in Lina. So, but it is very clear when you see people's project because there are really, it's really generous of people to go through all the trouble of taking multiple pictures and showing different progresses and stuff. And if, which they did in this case for this shawl, there's lots of projects done. And I would have known right away that this was not gonna work. All right, well, anyway. So I'm happy it. to finish it. It's a nice, uh, I it's a nice thing. I just, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll. I'm not going to be in a hurry to finish this because first of all I need to get another yarn to to finish it, and uh, I also have to rip out all this. But what I'm going to do because I know myself is I'm going to do the ripping out and put it on the needles right away mm -hmm. because otherwise I'll just avoid. It'll go in a closet. It'll go in a closet, and I really really like it. Right. So. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So um, I'm going to just try to put this back on somehow. And um, while I'm fooling with this, we can talk about Jennifer's 
Ahava? Finished object. All right, so I finished my Ahava, and as I got going on the sleeves, it's kind of like Kim just said, like, I don't know what happened. I was sort of procrastinating. I could have had this done a month ago. <laughs> and once I picked it back up and got everything organized, and I actually had to go back and watch our own podcast <laughs> to remember what needle size I even needed to finish the sleeves. Like, I just had these on holders, and the project was just sitting there, and I didn't take any notes about how I did my gate, nothing, so silly. So luckily I had talked about it in the podcast, so I went back and I was like, oh, I think I said it. And I was like, oh, four millimeter, thank goodness. So I got my four millimeter needles out. And uh, of course I used the Chiagu 12 inch fixed circulars to do the sleeve so fast. Yeah, they're great. Um, I had a 16 on in the beginning of the first one and I was having to magic loop or it was stretching everything just a little bit. I switched to the 12, my knitting was like double the speed. I can't believe how great yeah. those needles are. So if you don't like sleeves, the, the perfect size round rather than fiddling with magic loop or DPNs is the way mm -hmm. to go. So yeah, so I finished. So I had to do all this lovely cable detail um, down the arms. I of course have like really long limbs. So I added an extra repeat in here. I didn't end up bothering to fix where I felt I should have done the large number mm -hmm. of raglan increases. And it actually fits okay. I was probably loosened up some when you blocked it. Yeah, it's the heat in my armpits and making it a lot more comfortable. <laughs> um, actually, it does feel good today. And I was very particular that I did not want it to look bulky because all of these cables going down the sleeve, you could see how if it was too loose or not blocked mm -hmm. um, firmly, how it would start, you'd look a little bit like a football player with all this yeah. happening. And so I really fitted this sweater right. and it's very fitted. Yeah. Such... Like to the point where I'm thinking I'm not going to go to a buffet wearing it, uh, <laughs> but that <laughs> yeah, but that is what I wanted, mm -hmm. and uh, it worked. I think yeah. I did a really good job on yeah. the fitting, even though I could have used another you know couple millimeters yeah. here in in the armpit just right. because I have a large around here, uh, yeah. just my physique. Certainly. So and I've been doing a lot of yoga and plank and stuff, so I think the problem was getting worse as I was going mm -hmm. along. Um, and then I really love, I was concerned that this little heart wouldn't block out flat because before you block it, it kind of has, uh, you can see the trail bubble. of the cables, oh. um, but blocking really fixed all that. It does look like a perfect little heart now. And of course, this is an amethyst brooch in our Selkirk worsted. Right. And can uh, we just talk about that neckline for a second? Yeah, I know. So Jennifer Wood, the most elegant um aesthetic for her patterns and that's what really drew me to this yeah and also why i sized it fairly snug because i really wanted it to look like a ballet top and look very elegant and not mm -hmm. like a bulky cable sweater uh, and so i think that that's a success oh yeah it's fantastic that neckline is great yeah and it's yeah. very comfy yeah um and i think if you, you know it shows your collarbone a little mm -hmm. bit and you would think we were sick of amethyst brooch by now, but not quite. We have an amethyst brooch <laughs> update later, and uh, it's selling like crazy. It's just a wonderful color, and uh, I love the purple. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I hope fantastic. you can see it okay. We are going to take um, a photo of it outside, yeah. so we'll put that And you alternated stains on that. Yes, Even I though alternated. amethyst brooch is uh, a solid, but for us, solid yeah. actually means No, you tonal. need to. You always get tone on tone. Yeah. I alternated. Um, it was all from the same dye lot, but even if it's not, I just alternate. Yeah. So, and did you say we had a question? It wasn't on the Ravelry thread. No, it was on stains? YouTube. Yeah, so, so we should learn how it. to do that. Yeah. Why don't you just do that now? So, because I don't have any yarn with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so I actually just went and grabbed a couple balls of yarn so we could talk about alternating a bit. Um, and again, these are two different colors, but it doesn't matter. So I feel like this is a thing that people really overthink. When you say, mm -hmm. do you alternate skeins, they kind of get a little bit panically, like, no, what, what's that? Yeah. Um, so it couldn't really be any more simple. So what you're doing is you're obviously gonna cast on with one. Mm -hmm. If you're working in the flat, you've, you've cast it on, you're gonna knit to the other end. Um, so you'll be doing two rows and then when you get back to the other side, you just introduce the second one. All right. So now I'll knit with the pink over, back, and then pick up the gray yeah. over, back. All right. Now when you're in the round, of so, course. Sorry, I'm just going to, because I'm doing that, uh, I may have a question. So when I'm doing that, I'm doing that on my Joe Bats arm. So you're really just, um, you're leaving the, the end of the one, the yarn that you're dropping, you're leaving that to the side, you're just knitting back and forth with the new yarn, and then you just 
bring up your only two rows. Mm-hmm. So it's, you're fine to leave it on a flat piece, just trails along in the, uh, on the edge of the piece, because when you seam, you're seaming in from that anyway, one stitch usually. So it just completely gets hidden as part of the seam. Yeah, in the flat. I just realized actually my Virgo is perfect to show this. Okay. So just to show again, because I'm at the end of a row here, you can see, and I've got both my tails here, right? So this is the one I just brought over. I just mm-hmm. knit across here and this, and then I'm going to alternate and pick up this second ball now. So you see how short of a distance it is just yeah. to pull that up. Yeah. And of course they're all going down the side, but you would never see it. Um, so now I'm gonna knit with this one across and, and bring it back. And then the same thing, I'm gonna switch to the other ball. Right. Now when you're doing it in the round, it's not two rows. It's every row you could possibly switch because the tails are always together in the same place. Right. There's no reason to knit it back. You do the circle, you're here again. Right. Do the circle, they're both here again. Right. In that case, you can alternate every row. Yeah. Um, or you can alternate every second row again, which is probably what I would do because it just creates less. Um, <laughs> what are those called? What? In twist? color work. No, the little. Oh, uh, float. Floats. Jeez. It's not really a float, it's just like a twist. Well, right? it's kind of like a float. Okay. Yeah. It creates a little yeah. jump between yes. rows. So you could get away with still doing two rounds and then picking right. up the other so one. So can you just tilt your hands forward, like to kind of do it? I should show it this way, actually. Yeah. So here we're in the round. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but if not, we could try to add some pictures. But you're just always picking this one, and then when you bring that one back around, switch to the other one. Yeah. So the worst part of it is if you're always carrying two balls with you. Right. So And they get tangled occasionally. <laughs> yes. So these are both in my bag. And would you say for the best success, you do it in a non- on like, like you don't want to do it in the middle of the front in no in that. and I don't want to overcomplicate it right. usually the beginning of the round isn't yes because anytime you're knitting in the round you might get a notch or, right you know like right. for color work right. or whatever it usually is somewhere, somewhere on the side yeah if your beginning of round happens to be right in the front of your chest then yes I would keep the ball the extra strand over here right um, and on a sleeve too it would be better if it's in the round to alternate here right um, just because, you know, you have tension and things that you have to worry about when you're switching balls, same as when you're doing color work. So I don't know if that was reassuring or more frightening, but that's how it works. And you can just, I mean, you just do it and within the first like two or three rounds, you'll know for sure if you're, yeah. if you're, it's, yeah, it's really more of a tension thing, just paying yeah. attention. Yeah. And you could tension. tweak it a little bit with a, a tapestry needle or something just yeah. to make sure it looks nice and smooth. But I have found... In the flat, it makes no difference whatsoever. Right. It's along the edge. It's, right. There's nothing to it. But and in the round, you, see... you can get a little, a few little tension errors. And you'd have to be pretty, pretty perfect um, with your float and with switching between to not have a show at all. Right. Um, so I definitely wouldn't do it right here. I think it's one of those things that sounds scarier until you actually try to do it. And yeah. then you just, okay. Just try it's it on a flat thing. swatch. Yeah. Like, this I, is so easy. I would say um, that also on in the flat... Um, because you're doing it, it goes all the way the length of your, your work usually. It, as long as it's consistent, it just looks like part of the work. Like, the, the, like if you just, you're, you're doing it and you're doing it all the way, you really can't see it because you're doing it the whole way up the piece of the work. Yeah, no. So it, How the edge just looks, see it? There's yeah, nothing. There's, yeah, the edge is perfect. And uh, then the, um, and it's in the seam anyway. So when you're seaming, you always you do your sewing uh, a stitch or two in, and it's just in the seam. Yeah, so you know what happened to me one time by accident, because I'd like to say that I'm this brilliant. Well, maybe I did kind of think of it. I was doing a cardigan that was supposed to be knit flat, and I decided I was gonna knit it in the round and steek it. Yeah. So I put the alternating in the steek, yeah. and then I just cut it out. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's, that's a, good a hint. great thing to yeah. do if you understand the concept, and yeah. you if you alternate in the steek, then it's just like all the floats get cut out and yeah they're so gone disappears yeah. yeah so i did that on a cardigan right, right? so that was fun perfect okay, so that was just a little break because our ups guy justin just came to the door so uh it's so nice <laughs> chaos today yeah our dog is really happy when he comes to you because he always has a little dog treat i love it when you get to know your people yeah 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 that's so. great all right, so what the heck were we talking about? Oh yeah, so that's alternating skeins. So right. hopefully that helps. If mm-hmm. it doesn't though, 
right back. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll do. A Let us video know if it didn't help, and we'll yourself. go over it with uh, a knitting example. But I think it's just a kind of thing where yeah. you can overthink it a bit. Yeah. All right. right. Perfect. Good. So was I done talking about my hava? I don't know. Do you want to say something else about it? Uh. I love it. Yeah. I think I'm going to wear it. I think yeah. it's a sweater I'll she really modeled, wear. She modeled it at Knit Night last night. Yeah. And much lots of wigs and I. Yeah. Knit Night was so fun last night. We yeah. Did so, we yeah. Just, well, it's fun every time. Yeah. We had a big discussion. We have a, we had an election in Canada. Yeah. We got not a new prime minister. We got yeah. a, we got a, our prime minister back. Yeah. We got our prime minister <laughs> last back. Last night. Yeah. Anyway, so we were talking. We had a little, you know lively discussion yeah. about uh, politics and whatever not in general terms in general terms yeah. yes so it was uh it was well, i was up late last night yeah and it's, i guess it's a minority government so yeah. the the liberals uh, did not have a majority so they have to play nice now with people. right That's it would be great good. if they would take the example from the minority government that we have here in, in the, the province Eli, because yeah. it's actually working pretty well i think seems everybody to seems to be for the most part, not a lot of complaints. Not a lot of complaints anywhere. Yeah, they're so all they're all um, conducting themselves with a lot of decorum. I would say. Yeah, so it's even super if, friendly. Yeah, so even if you don't agree with the politics, which obviously some people won't agree, they all seem to be playing nicely. Yeah, mutual respect. That's yes. what we've got. Yes. Okay, so, so that's good. We'll hope for the so same. So it was thing. a fun night. There were a few people missing, and I have a feeling maybe that's why. Though they had that's to go right. vote. We were very serious yeah. about it. I actually left in the middle of knit night to go vote. Yes. Yeah, and uh, it's so funny going to a polling station around here. I was the only one there. Yeah, and the woman doing the thing had gone to the bathroom, so I had to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's rules. Back. I think and there's rules about on. how many people need to be present for the. Right. Um, well, there were three all together, yeah. but there was one missing, so <laughs> they had, you had to wait to vote. So I was, I was like, oh, I picked yeah. a bad time to come then. But I'm the only one here. At first, I thought the station no had closed, and I didn't even know. Like there were no yeah. cars or anything, so it's. Very convenient to vote on Prince Edward Island. Like, yes. No lineups. No excuses. <laughs> As they say, no excuses, no lineups. Right. It's really literally across the street that we right. had to go. So that was funny. Okay. So that was a diversion. Okay. Anyway, we've got a lot of wow. It's just really hard to stay on track today. <laughs> okay. So we're not showing any whips today. No, I'm still working on my Virgo, which I just right. showed. But That's it's right. the miles of the same thing, and I actually hope to have that finished by next episode because then I'm going to be starting a test knit that I am super duper uber excited about. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Really excited. Don't say anything else about it. No. Okay. And I've continued to work on my Joe Bats arm back. So there is actually progress on that, but it's like a, you said, it's just More the same insane. thing. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. So we received an order of the Coco Knits um, sweater workshop. Yeah. So we carry this in the store yeah. anyway, but we uh, took the plunge and ordered, um, took advantage of the fact that they, uh, their, their publisher is actually in Canada. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a little bit of a, an advantage to have it shipped directly from the publisher. So we took advantage of that, except that you have to buy a whole, wow. whole, whole box, but that's no problem because we sell out of these right. all the time. They sell, so, what is that? 20? It's not that many. No, it's really not that many. Yeah. So um, I, I have to say that, well, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say, since I'm such a big Coco Knits fan, that I actually never really read the book. So now I've read the book because I want to pick my next project out of here. And I'm super impressed. Everything Coco Knits does is amazing. Right. And um, so I think we're gonna do, I will choose a pattern from here and for the next episode, we're going to talk about it. And maybe if you want to join me um, in a pattern, because um, just the way that this has been written and the way that it goes together, it's just um, really takes out a lot of the questions and stuff that you would have about f not only not only sweater knitting in general, but also about sizing and what Fitting. shapes are better for your body type and. Um, most of the patterns in here, from what I read, they, sh they give you adjustments that you would make in the yarn selection and the needle size and everything, depending on what your body type is so that you have the best, um, fit or advantage for your body type. Even if you want to write do a pattern that maybe not be obvious 
for the right as the right choice. So similar to things about like what you were talking about, like the Lahava, uh, the Hava, Ahava. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, Ahava, Ahava. Ahava. <laughs> so um, similar. Ahava. <laughs> is, uh, similar to that, that you know, you might want to make a little bit of an adjustment on the way the fit because of the fabric that you're creating and so forth. So she talks about that uh, in this book as well. But I have to say, I'm always, I'm always a crazy about this kind of thing. I love it. Is that um, she talks about the tools, the coconut tools. So, um, so what I love about, or with the, you know, the the uh, the thrill of discovery is finding out about things that your tools can do that you didn't even know. So the very first thing um, she gives a list of essential tools and a list of optional tools. And she talks about it and she gives alternatives. If you don't want to purchase something, uh, something new, she gives alternatives to, um, uh, to all of the, the, her suggestions. But the biggest thing with Jennifer just demonstrated is that so cool. It's a yeah. ruler. Yes. And we've sold a lot of these already. Um, yeah. both. but not everybody likes the idea of having it on their wrist. Right. Okay. So then it can function as a flat tray sitting on your table if you yeah. want it, and you can keep your stitch markers and your all your yes. coconuts magnetic stuff here. Yeah. But it's actually, yeah, it's got a spine in it that... Uh, it's so brilliant. Ugh. Love coconuts. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're cuckoo for coconuts. Yeah. But look, we didn't even know that. Yeah. And of course, their website's on that. So cute. <laughs> um, so yeah, these come in a bunch of different colors, and we're just trying to, we're still keep trying to keep the two colors in stock, but yeah. we'll eventually carry the whole, everything that Coconuts makes. Yeah. We're very close to having that now. Yeah. And uh, we're, we've just ordered the worksheets yeah. that go with. So the book is a general book that you can use over and over and over again, and has many, many mm -hmm. patterns in it, which you can adapt many, many ways, mm -hmm. almost infinite. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're going to get the worksheet, which is for the individual project you're working right. on to help you work through the method and right. get that all right. And I suspect that what I'm going to find out when I do this myself is that the things that I'm going to learn about in here are going to be with me of for course. the rest of my knitting life. Of course. Because yeah. it's a real, um, it, it re I read through the whole thing, literally every page. And, um, this, this is just, fun. just makes sense. Yes. So, you know, take the I makers have, keep away from I the child. I have one of these that I bought a long time ago. For yourself. Yeah, for myself. For myself. carried them. That I've never used because I, because it came in a set with a lot of other stuff, but I never used it because I couldn't picture myself knitting with my cable needles stuck to my right. arm and everything. And I was just like, I read it in the book and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh. You got it at really, the Mermaid's Pearl, right? Yeah, States, exactly. Yeah. When we went to Rhinebeck. Yeah. It's the only thing I bought. And, yeah. And I got coconut to... stitch markers and she got maker's <laughs> keep and that yeah. was it for yeah. Rhinebeck for us. <laughs> And I love New York mug. And not even in Rhinebeck. We, no. we stopped yeah, at the somewhere else. else. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, is that the Coco Knits stitch markers are color coordinated to go with the instructions in the book. And, um, you know, the whole, we love it when you just make your knitting life easier because you're using your t tools properly. And this is, you know, she gives a really good suggestion about how to use the colors to make sure that you know exactly where you are. And uh, even if you, you put your project aside, if you pick it up and you're using the stitch markers in the way that she describes, you will know exactly where you are in the pattern. So, so cool. Yeah. So you're gonna work through this, which is really neat. Right. Um, and uh, we'll create a Ravelry thread yeah. about the Cocoa Knit Sweater Workshop yeah. because a few people have already bought the books from us. Yeah. Uh, they are online, they're on our website. So mm -hmm. if you wanna join in that fun, then Kim will moderate that um, that group special as everybody learns it together. Right. But it's very cool. Right. And we have all the stuff pretty well yeah. um, that you need. If there's something in the book that you want, we'll have yeah. it online. Yeah. And if we haven't already ordered it, we will we'll do we will to carry. It. Yeah. yeah. To We're carry. very close to having everything they make. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know us, we love good quality tools like the good and, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And things that are smart. Yeah, yeah, very smart. Yeah, so this is really... And uh, uh, Julie does some amazing videos for coconuts too yes. that you can find, uh, I assume, on their website. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, like little techniques and tips and stuff. And there's tons of patterns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really great company. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. I wrote to them um, originally when we wanted to carry, and almost no one in Canada had coconuts mm -hmm. at the time because I saw those little rainbow markers in Vogue Knitting like five years ago and lost it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was like, I need those in my life. Couldn't find anywhere in Canada that I could even have them shipped from. Right. And didn't want to pay duty and a bunch of other things. It was getting a bit ridiculous. Like, I didn't want to pay 50 bucks for them. Yeah. Um, so, the minute we got down into the States, of course, I got them at the Mermaid's mm -hmm. Pearl. But I wrote to um, their wholesale coordinator and said, you know, can I use your pictures on our website and they were so generous and then yes there's nobody we love serving more than the lyss of the world right. um, to help them be successful right. and you're welcome to use our photography and that was just so nice yeah um not that it's rare that a company would allow you to use their photography but just their their spirit of really wanting yeah. to help and we love supporting businesses that are really like take care and everything that they do yeah. and this is a, a company that we find is uh does yeah. that as well never and been disappointed about anything no. of theirs that i've touched they've even answered emails when think something has been described as a thingy yeah I was like, <laughs> again their wholesale person jennifer is lovely i i must have been really tired i don't even remember saying that i'm like I wrote, I sent her an email that basically had, what's that magnetic thingy? Yeah. <laughs> I can't and she find it online. And, she didn't mean and I didn't mean this. It was some other magnetic thingy. And yeah. uh, she wrote back and she's like, well, it's a good thing I know what a thingy is. So I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I looked at my own subject heading and I was like, wow, I put thingy in a business email. <laughs> How tired was I? <laughs> thingy is not a word, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. Me, Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh my Lord. Yeah. That's anyway. fatigue for you. And yeah. she figured out what the thingy was and yeah. <laughs> the thingy all sorted out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't so, this thingy. Great. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, that. I am too. I yeah. think that's a great project for you because this yeah. is right up your alley. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to choose something that's fairly quick to, yes. to knit because there's all different Just to learn the method. The first just to learn the through. method for the first time. Yeah. So, Beautiful. and I need, I need a knit night another knit night project so uh these are um there's some shaping in these sweaters and everything but there's a lot of uh like looks what appears to be like straight knitting yeah as well. so okay uh, so that's Great. what we're gonna do right. and uh we're going to interview uh barry eisenhower yeah or we have interviewed barry eisenhower and you're gonna watch it now yeah from windswept farms and which is uh, a cute little farm yeah name. and his company for his uh fiber and fibery goodness things right. is opulent alpaca yeah. so uh we'll with that without further ado <laughs> we'll see jennifer talking to barry over to barry yeah all right so hi everybody i'm here with barry eisenhower from an alpaca farm over in Nova Scotia, which is called? Opulent Alpaca. Opulent Alpaca, and they are on Instagram. I'll put how to find them in the title below. And we've actually been spinning some of Barry's fiber for a couple of years now. So he brings in his raw fiber and we turn it into lovely yarn. And we just thought it would be interesting to hear from Barry about how they got into alpaca, similar to a lot of the interviews we do and what their plans are for their business going forward. Because Barry is actually from a finance background. So finance and alpacas is a bit of a departure, perhaps <laughs> some might think. So do you want to tell us how you ended up getting animals in the first place? Sure. Um, so I guess our firm is, um, our firm is known as uh, Windswept Farm, okay. which is where we raise the animals. So both Isabel and I uh, decided we wanted to have some animals. She's a registered nurse and I'm in the finance business. And, um, but we didn't want to do cows and we didn't want to, so we, she was reading one of these magazines, I forget what it's called anyway, and uh, it had an ad for alpacas. Oh. And that was the beginning in 1996. Sounds kind of like you just picked up your alpacas out of the Sears catalog. Well, pretty close. It was the Canadian living that, that the ad was in. <laughs> That's so funny. Like the small ads at the back? It, it was a whole page. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a whole page. And uh, it, I think it was a promotion for... I don't know, somebody from Canada. Anyway, oh, that's wow. how we started. Oh, wow, that's so and funny. And we did the inquiry, and about six months later, we had two alpacas. Great. So how many alpacas do you have now on your farm? We have close to 60. Wow, and that's a pretty big alpaca operation. Like, that's a lot of alpacas. It is, and we have both types. There are right. two types, the Hakaya, which is the most common, and then there's the Surrey, which is... Um, about one percent of the population okay so what's different about the surrey alpaca for people who've never even heard of that before so the surrey alpaca is almost like angora it's like a dreadlock and it's very oh. shiny and okay yeah yeah i'll have to get you to send us a picture of one in full mm -hmm. blanket what would you call it full fur full 
We call we say full fleece, but what would you say? It's the same. Full fleece. Yeah. Okay, because that sounds like it would be kind of interesting to yeah, look they're, at. They're kind of cool. I have one on our on our site. You'll see where the wind is blowing. On. Right. So. so, what was your thinking behind getting the two types then? Because I guess we've always been uh, wanting to do something different, and uh, this was different. Nobody else had them. Okay. And we felt that it was an, a we felt that it was interesting to blend the fibers okay. to make a different yarn that would stand out from the other. Yeah, and we do blend the Surrey often with the stuff that you send to us correct. and turn it into yarn with Hakaya and sometimes wool too. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And so you just recently opened a new shop or you renovated your retail space, is that right? Yeah, so we opened a new shop with our production for, um, for felting in the back. Okay, and you do insoles and... We do insoles, landscape whatever you call those sheets, uh, we do kits. Okay. Like DIY kits of alpacas or Christmas decorations. Oh, wow, there. for needle felting? Needle felting, yeah. yeah. Okay, neat. And you're in a very beautiful part of the province of Nova Scotia, Inverness County in Cape Breton, have I got that right? That's right. Yeah, so if anyone is ever going through Cape Breton, which I know lots of our viewers are planning to visit the Maritimes at some point in, their, in the future, it's a beautiful spot. Mm. And are you originally from there? I'm not. I'm originally from Lunenburg, but my wife is originally from the area. Oh, okay. And actually, we live in the home that her great-grandparents built. Oh, neat. So. Because, well, Lunenburg is lovely, too. It is. That's around from where our mother's from. Okay. So you're lucky. You're from two blue very nosers. beautiful places. <laughs> yeah, we're blue nosers. That's right. Yeah. All right. So what are your plans for your farm going forward? Are you planning to grow or what? So... Uh, to grow the firm, we are growing our herd for right. sure, and we're, I guess, improving the genetics of our mm -hmm. to improve the fiber. As far as the production facility is concerned, our hope, uh, not our hope, our plan is that we will be sort of going end to end. So from sort of the gr growing the fiber, sorting the fiber, washing the fiber to the end result, which is the uh, bat and the needle felt, which we have. Most of the equipment, there's just a few pieces we require. Right. As far as the yarn, we will continue with the blends, uh, but we will be partnering right. for that pro process. And again, we, um, you folks being one of our partners that right. understand our vision. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. And we like working with your fiber a lot. It's always very interesting. It always turns out really nicely yeah, too. I think great so. compliments. It's okay so. for me to say that. Okay. And I've done some dyeing for you too, which is really fun. Exactly. Yeah, because Surrey alpaca is very lustrous. Um, so it does make the colors kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, as opposed to sort of a wool, which I'm used to doing most of the time. Although we do try to make our wool lustrous too. And we, uh, most of our colors, the, the re I guess what we get back from our customers that, you know, the coloring is very bright and vibrant and yeah. exciting. So yeah. that's, um, you yeah. know, that's what our customers tell us. Neat. I find it exciting to do. All right. So I understand that you also do some woven products and stuff that you sell in your shop. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So what happens, um, some of the yarns that we have done here, here are predetermined for a finished product. Uh, so we, we have on staff a person that does uh, our knitting, mm -hmm. and right now we have uh, primarily scarves, toques, uh, and some sh and some ponchos and shawls. Uh, we have commissioned uh, um, weaving as well uh, from a great gal in New Brunswick. Um, so that's kind of yes. Cool. So are you just sort of building that up now, or, or is the stuff available online for sale? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so all of our finished products are available online. Uh, there will be a select amount of products that we will be uh, wholesaling oh, okay. in the future. Neat. Yeah. That's bold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that adds another whole dimension. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. We do wholesale now uh, some of our felting boots. Oh, okay. And that's become, um, you know, quite successful and we're getting great re reviews. So oh, that's, great. That's exciting. That's neat. I yeah. haven't seen any of your felting kits or anything. You'll have to bring one next time yeah. you come by. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so that's neat. I didn't realize that you were actually doing wholesaling. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about um, the felting kits and what your plans are there? And also, are you wholesaling insoles? We are. Okay, neat. Yeah. So what we do with the kits, um, they're a package and in the package would uh, include the instructions on what to do. Uh, there's a felting board, two needles, 
and two cutouts of uh, right now they're alpacas and then the uh, the rovings colored rovings that go with it uh, right now they're all being packaged by um, mentally and physically ha uh, challenged group oh, okay so they're uh, and we're hope they're hoping and we are as well that as we grow we'll be able to employ them permanently oh, as part okay. of our staff so we've just we started with the alpaca cut figures and now we're moving into season so our next season will be christmas so we'll have snowmen um santa claus that type of okay. thing then easter so they're a flat uh project they as opposed flat. to the three-dimensional kits that you typically see that's correct okay perfect that sounds neat so it's a felt backing and then they're felting the colors and the fluffiness onto that correct on All both right. sides of the oh, a lot okay, of people are neat. doing both sides for wall hangers. right driftwood okay numerous things are doing ornaments okay cool and the insoles so the insoles was a project that is that is not new they're in the industry but most of them are wool so what we've done is taken uh, because we're in um, ethical and sustainable sustainable we had to we were looking for things for our lower grade fiber right and this was one of the things that we could use so they're uh, 50 percent uh, wool and 50% alpaca that is ne needle felted into sheets and then we which we do at our our facility and then we also have a a press a clicker press where we press out the uh, cut out the insoles from small to extra large. right and they must be super comfy and warm very comfy and very yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, neat. because they're lightweight because yeah. of the alpaca but yet the strength of the yeah warm. they're great for in your rubber boots I bet exactly your, <laughs> uh, yeah rubber, or anything anything like that yeah yeah, yeah. you must wear them I for do. doing farm tours we do year round feel tested to feel tested <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I even uh, wore them when I went up north and uh, had them in my uh, a, a boot that I had I forgot my winter boots okay. and honestly I didn't need wow neat my winter boots all right so one thing we didn't talk about um when we last spoke to an alpaca producer is the feeding of alpaca so I'm kind of curious like grass sheep can be just grass solely if as long as your grass is good quality good quality pasture what do alpacas eat they eat grass they do it's funny alpacas of course come from the andes so right. i mean the vegetation is fairly sparse yes there. yeah so like unlike sheep sheep need a higher protein alpacas do not do well with protein oh, okay. so a lower quality fibrous is better for oh, them wow. than high protein Hey. Isn't that so interesting? Because we're always complaining on here about the lack of protein exactly. <laughs> in forage for sheep, so you don't have that problem. We don't. I mean, we yeah. can like an average uh, hay quality is satisfactory. All right, neat. That's so lucky. I'm yeah. so envious right now. So, do they get grained at all? They do. Uh, usually, most of the mums oh, and the nursing mums and or um, pregnant mums, which take eleven months, right, uh, for a single. Um, but we wind up with, um, it's called a dairy ration. Okay. So there is this formula and for sure, I mean, you can buy, um, there are some, I guess, formulas out there that's quite expensive. Right. Uh, but we, we took that sort of recipe, I'll call it, right. took it to the Department of Agriculture and they did comparison. Right. And it was exactly the comparison except for a few mineral, a mineral block. To the dairy ration oh, okay and half the price neat wow so of being course, a farmers yeah. right we have to always watch our it's all about line. the pennies for feed right. yeah all right so they get the same nutrition and less on their pocket right neat and it's really probably interesting for people to know too how often farmers do consult with the department of agriculture and work with government services just to make their businesses better we just had someone in here this morning from the Department of Agriculture talking about our future plans and stuff. So we actually are quite well supported. And we meet with them on Friday as yeah. well. So Me. They, yeah, they're very, uh, we, you know, we test everything. Yeah. You know. I think it's good for people to know that we do have an ongoing relationship with the departments of agriculture in our two provinces just to try to always make sure we're doing everything as well as we can and they're a wealth of knowledge yeah right? of course you can't know everything yeah they, they have, have specialists and... yeah it's perfect they have some great grass experts yes they do yeah <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately they can't control the weather no. that's the problem we're facing right now expertise is not helping no. uh all right great well is there anything else you want to tell us or 
No, uh, just okay. let uh, go on our site, our Facebook site, the Opulent Alpaca. Okay. Uh, or Instagram. Yeah. And uh, any questions, we'd love to answer. Them. Yeah, sure. We're always happy to get inquiries, aren't we? So I'll put all your information below how they can find you guys. Okay. All okay. right, great. Thanks, Barry. That was it. All right. So that yeah. was super fun. And then Barry was a good sport to come and do it because yeah. he really doesn't like being on camera. He told me five minutes in. Yeah. Uh, well, who does really, Barry? Right. right. <laughs> and his, I mean, him and his wife run the firm. Yeah. So uh, he's not by himself. No, well, he would have preferred she was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, they're lovely people and mm -hmm. we we only work with lovely people. Yeah. Really. Our, our clients are wonderful and mm -hmm. uh, their animals are, of course, adorable. And he always does really interesting things with his fiber, different blends and stuff like that. And yeah. he lets me die up a storm and yeah. they're very trusting. I love that. They're just yeah. like, whatever you think, Jennifer. And they're good collaborators uh, too. Yeah. So it's really fun to help people sort of co-create with people and their fiber and make it extra special and, and give them a lot of success. Right. And uh, I know the dyed stuff always goes really quickly, which I always feel good about because it means I'm helping. Yeah. Uh, so that's always great. <laughs> good. So that's, uh, so that was great. So, and it's always fun to have somebody else do some talking. Yeah, of course. You don't want to listen to us all the time. <laughs> it's probably hard for our viewers to, to uh, believe that we like the break. Get sick of talking <laughs> ourselves. I know, right? <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> so now we're just going to do um, a shop update on the things that we haven't uh, talked. This is a little bit. I should be using You're what I'm going to show. By this. Just yeah. Here. Just I'm going to. I should there. be okay. using what I'm going to talk about next. Right. All right. <laughs> so uh, we actually uh, carry a designer um, with that does accessories, mostly for shawls, I would say, but she does other things as well. So it's Jewel design and um, we have been we try out we always try out something first to see how well it it goes and then we decide if we're going to embark on the on the more inventory and so forth so this is a really good company that does really um, excellent shawl pins and they do um, clasps clasps and, and, things. Clasps and handles and things yeah. like that so they have a whole lot of things that we don't carry leather yet. goods and some metal working yeah stuff. exactly yeah. So, but we do carry uh, their shawl pins. So I just chose two to show because uh, we will put these up on our website. Um, so we'll, we, we have other ones, but we'll, we'll add them gradually to the yeah. website. And all this stuff always goes under accessories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, she's got traditional shawl pins that come with a, a thingy. A, <laughs> and a stick. thingy and a stick. <laughs> a thingy and a stick. The, the old-fashioned stick thingy. Yeah, it kind of makes like a buckle, I guess. Yeah. What would you call that? I um, have no idea. <laughs> the ring, there's always a ring and a stick. Yeah. So she, I'm showing one in metal, and this one is called the coil. Um, the coil so one. So cute. It's yeah. very cute. And they're... They're, well, it's not really, I was going to say simple, but intriguing. They're it's not whimsical. Really simple. Yeah, exactly. It's, they're really nice and uh, good quality, um, nice and sturdy and well thought out, I yes. would say. Another another yeah. company that thinks yeah. out about their... And a lot items. of people do carry these already. I'm sure a lot of you have seen them, but it's just yeah. always nice for us to be able to add another variety of things right. to our page so that you can get over the shipping threshold, you know, yeah. one-stop shopping kind of deal. So right. it's fun to have these right. on there. So these are all lovely and super nice, but what's really cool is that she also um, makes and designs penannular, I hope I pronounced that right. Sounds right. Penannular, I guess it's called a brooch. brooch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually, um, this one's called Runa. She does a lot of different ones, but this is our best selling one, Runa. And it's the, the stick, if you want, is attached <laughs> directly to the brooch part. So she actually, even on her website, has a, a video of how to use it if you're not sure how to, uh, how to apply it. But what happens is you, I, I'm just going to show it quickly here because I watched the video. Okay, so, very good. Um, I, I'm going to get panicked and get going in the wrong yeah, direction. Yeah, so I hope I'm going to be able to do it. So you just put the pin to the back. You put it through your garment, uh, and yes. then you you pull the fabric okay, up, so and you don't then catch you, it. Yeah, and then you put the pin down through the hole, through the hole, and then you turn this. Yes, beautiful. Exactly. So it's nice and snugly on there. Yes. No, no chance of losing your stick thingy. Right. <laughs> no, the stick thingy is secure. And she does do a video. So we're, I know this may not have been very, uh, you might not have seen it very well, but she does do a video on her, her website. So we carry these. 
and they're just so interesting and somebody said oh it's a celtic design um it's actually i think these brooches were um from roman times cool yeah so and still very effective it would be very uh handy thing to have in roman times yeah <laughs> i feel yeah. i'm gonna do it i think we showed them one time before but we weren't really doing it again them. yeah just don't get the fabric caught and then it just yeah. turns. Yeah, it's beautiful. You should just leave that on. Yeah, lovely. Love them. Yep, so we love another smart, smart thing, good quality. Yeah. That's great. Jewel. Jewel designs. Yep. Way to go. Love on our them. website. Okay. On our website. Next, Whoa. more excitement. Yes. Okay. When so. will the excitement stop? <laughs> We've been having a lot of fun around here. You know, it's funny when it's like not summer and you're not like going seven days a week, how a little bit more inspired and kind of relaxed you can be yeah. <laughs> even though I had a busy if you all watch my stories I was eating my way through thousands of dollars worth of local food <laughs> like Thursday and Friday of last week and it was so enjoyable yeah um you know we love living here like yeah. we love you know the stuff that you all see our business and uh, our life and the knitting but there's also a tremendous food culinary movement yeah. here Tremendous talent, beautiful musical talent. I just put up a story today. I'm going to see someone uh, named Rachel Beck this weekend. I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. Um, you know, Juno nominees and Grammy nominees from here and stuff. You would just never realize. Mm -hmm. And I really like living in a place where you can you can kind of do it all. Yes. Like you don't miss anything. No. You know, there's so many concerts going in at Toronto at one time. Gwen Stefani could be in practically, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't even know it. So I really like to go deep. Yeah. Um, and I personally like to see people that aren't overexposed. Right. Yeah. Uh, and be in the front row and just really get the full experience. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really great if you're thinking yeah. of moving to a smaller place. That's yeah. a huge advantage. We yeah. love it. Anyway, I don't know why I got off on that tangent. But so we've been having fun. So on page 55 of Saltwater Classics, which mm -hmm. many of you have already purchased mm -hmm. because we reordered this book a gazillion times, it feels like, the moose cap. Yes. Well, who doesn't love a moose cap? So um, our lovely helper slash employee Janet right. took it upon herself with my urging <laughs> to <laughs> knit uh, one of these out of our, our yarn and see if we could find some colors that would work because we don't do a marled yarn yet. Yeah. And uh, what I mean by marled is this is like a two ply yarn and one ply is gray and one ply is white and then they're twisted together and that's a marled yarn. Right. We don't spin any of that yet. No. Have we ever? Yeah. One time we did. Yeah, we did one for oh, uh, Green that Gable Alpaca Alpaca. one. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I have a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to do it in the future, but we're not taking on anything like that right now. So we've created a kit out of our Selkirk worsted using the moose cap pattern. And the colors are natural, pine cone, and slate. Mm -hmm. So I'm just doing up the kit in the one color for now. I have no idea which is the front. I Doesn't know there's matter. a little bit of a, oh. well, there's a little bit of a jog. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to put this on and hope to heaven wow. that I don't look terrible. Peter Frampton may make another appearance. In <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving it on till the end now. There's no <laughs> taking it off after this. Not with my hair. No. Okay. So does that look normal? Yeah. Do I look normal? Super cute. Oh, yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be really hot by the end. <laughs> so <laughs> you nothing better than a moose on your hat. I feel the moose really goes with the fancy Celtic brooch and the well, ballet top. You're actually going to be like a, it's a Mr. Dress Up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is great. I'm just great. This Do you is want, perfect. Do you want my shawl? No. no thanks. Okay. So I have, maybe I'll throw a James Bond t-shirt on after. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so fun. Right. Yeah. So if you want to make the moose cap right. in these colors, yeah. that's under kits on our website yeah. now. And it's super comfy. Um, it is a bit of a, it's like a looser, I don't know if Janet's a loose knitter or whatever, but it's like so cozy and yeah, fun. It's perfect. And, it looks uh, really, really cute on I you. love the brim. I hope it does because yeah. I haven't even seen it on no, myself. No, okay. It's super cute. <laughs> Nothing so, like putting a hat on. Uh, once again, you have to buy the book to get the pattern. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so many people already have it too. That's but, right. And if this puts you over the edge, people are loving the books. Yes. Yes. They're just wonderful. We can't and say it enough. We cannot uh, be more happy to support these two great yes. ladies, Christine and Shirley, yeah. with their endeavors. It's on such a subject. wonderful project. Yeah. And again, you know, local, local women. Um, one thing I really learned at the food event, which is called Forage PEI, and it runs annually, 
um, was there was a very famous chef there, Jeremy Charles, and mm-hmm. he's worked in Chicago, decided he wanted to be back in Newfoundland, where he was from. Right. And he's now created a destination by going back home and taking a risk. And I think what I really took away from that whole event was that if you have the passion and talent, you can be a success anywhere. Mm -hmm. Choose the life you want to live and then make it into something wonderful. Right. And he really couldn't be doing better. Mm -hmm. And he's home with his family. His kids are growing up where he grew up, where he wants to be in his natural element. He didn't have to stay in Chicago mm-hmm. to be successful and mm-hmm. uh, stay in that in that rat race and do all that. So and, that was really cool. And he's uh, he's super supportive of local. Yes. Yes. And uh, I'm I'm pleased to say that at the end of um, well, about halfway through the second day, he said he was just his mind was blown by everything that was mm-hmm. available on PEI in terms of local food mm-hmm. products and stuff. So it's just really great to hear, and I think that's kind of what we thought we might be able to do, but we didn't know if we'd end up selling pies on the side of the road or what we might do. But when you follow your passion Mm -hmm. and you stay true to your heart, you can be a success anywhere. You don't need to chase the typical um, nine to five corporate thing that your guidance counselor laid out for you that, you know, sort of everybody else um, Mm -hmm. is doing. If that's what you want to do, um, then that's great. You know, if you mm-hmm. want to be in finance or whatever, then of course you're not going to be on PEI playing the markets. No, but and, <laughs> but, and you, you have to figure out what it is you're passionate about. Yes. That's, that's the key to success. Yes. If you can figure that out. Yeah. Ask your heart. Yes. And so two big Newfoundland success stories there. Mm-hmm. Jeremy with his restaurants uh, in St. John's and these two wonderful women who have written these books that have just exceeded the, all of their sales expectations. Yeah. And they're wonderful. And you can tell it's an authentic project. And that's what makes it great. Yes. Authenticity. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just a little bit of a rant there. But it was so reassuring to see someone else that made that choice of where they wanted to be mm-hmm. successful. And then they went there and then they made it happen. Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, well, where does... Where do knitting books come from? You know, just yeah. do it where your heart lies. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and it comes out so much better as a result. Yeah. So love that's, it. yeah, love, 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 love. love so love loose it. cap, move it okay. on. Okay. Also, if you bought either of those books, we do have mitten kits online. So if you missed last episode, it was a big launch of excitement because we did up, uh, I don't know, 30 different colors of color work kits. Right. Um, that you can use in any of the patterns in saltwater classics or saltwater mittens that involve a group four yarn. So if you mm-hmm. haven't seen those already, go on, check them out. We've sold quite a few of them already. We're really excited to see all those mittens pop up as finished FOs. Yes. Um, because there's really quite a wide variety of colors available. We think they're pretty reasonably priced. So if you want to make color work mittens, but not buy a full skein of every mm-hmm. color that you want to do, there's both two color and three color combinations available. And again, mm-hmm. they're on kits and I'll link to them where you can find them in the show notes too. Great. So more support for Christine and Shirley. Yes. Go. Go. All right. So <laughs> then. So also this week we spun more I Own a Bunny. And mm-hmm. if anyone's been watching throughout, they know about I Own a Bunny. It's our 15% Angora blend. And uh, but we did something really different with it this time. We originally launched it in the spring, and I did a bunch of lovely pastel to me, what looks like a soft bunny kind of color. Right. Um, I had a very pastel palette with it. Well, radical suggestion from Knit East. <laughs> Will you do I own a bunny in amethyst brooch? <gasps> Crazy, <laughs> like super dark. Uh, lusty purple. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, I thought, why not? So we dyed it up in amethyst brooch and twilight Mm -hmm. so a color and a coordinating coordinating color and once again it's a fairly small batch um our bunnies are we're limited by the ability of our bunnies to grow their and and the brusher to brush them out stay mat free yes yeah so that's up so link in the show notes to purchase Mm -hmm. the iota bunny and amethyst brooch and I picked the pastels because to me, like I said, they were very spring bunny and it's really bloomy, mm-hmm. and, but it'll be really cool to see it knit up in a darker color yeah. too. It's probably going to be fairly spectacular. I would think so. I haven't swatched it yet, yeah. but uh, that's going to be pretty cool. So that's available. And I think that if you have, a, well, I don't know if you want to match the, mix, mix the badges because there might be a slight difference, but if you had the violet or the lullaby, um, it probably would coordinate pretty yeah, well. Yeah, I think you could it. use them together. Can, could you? The, You're the color expert, not me. Oh, the colors? Oh, well, whatever works. If yeah. it looks good, do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's good, do that, it. Yeah, yeah. For that matter, that's yeah. right. So. And they'd certainly be high contrast enough because very, very, very light depth of shade in all of the Iona right. Bunny made to date and very, very dark. The darkest you can possibly do with this amethyst brooch yeah. color. So, so that's. 
perfect. It's super fun. You have it left after if you could if you resist it knitting with it when you bought it right with the other colors and we've seen some beautiful <laughs> oh, projects in yeah. that year and i honestly wish we could make a ton of it i think yeah. we could sell a ton of it right um it's lovely and it, there's some of them uh you can see on ravelry under the iona bunny yarn mm -hmm. some of the projects have just been stunning and i know yeah. we've shown one of them on here specifically so the All next right. thing that we're talking about in the in the shop update is uh i think it's really really funny this is you know, leave it to us to come up with some kind of t twist on something. So we're going to, um, we just have had such a great response to our Ram James on the project bags and the t-shirts that we've come up with a fun new. This is the child. Yeah. T-shirts and of course the bags. Right. Everybody's loving the bags. We love that everybody loves the bags. We yes. love the bags. And yeah. if you missed last episode, just quickly, it's a zippered project bag, definitely big enough for a large sweater project, plus your water bottle. Yeah. Um, and there's an inside pocket. Right. For stuff. And, and uh, yeah, it's nice. Last podcast, we talked about the fact that we actually sent, um, was it a t-shirt or the bag? To, I forget now. One to Tasmania. Tasmania bags. Bags. Okay. I think, yeah. So, um, <laughs> or t-shirts. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> We got a note from that, but yes. customer from Tasmania. Tasmania. But yeah. we talked about it on the podcast, and she, forgetting where she was and who was sitting next to her, yelled, "That's me!" At the I'm, screen. At yes. the screen, and her husband was sitting next to her and said, "I'm paraphrasing, but something like, you're kidding. You bought some <laughs> you bought yarn from from uh, a yarn shop in Prince Edward Island." all the way to Tasmania, but she actually brought the project bag. Yeah. And uh, so then we came up with an idea. Won't it, wouldn't it be fun to see where James goes? Yes. And he's gone to France and, you know, all over the right. place. So we've come up with a hashtag. Yeah. James spotting, which right. of course you're seeing below. And there are two S's. Yes. In a row. That's a bit tricky. And we have to give Rachel credit. Not only is she a tremendous baker, <laughs> she has a great sense of humor, and she's obviously a genius. So she came up with the James Spotting yeah. tag because we were like, okay, we need a tag because, you know, there's like the Flat Stanley children's book and right. Flat Stanley shows up all over the place. And uh, so we didn't want to do Flat James, yeah. <laughs> but something that we could tag our... Um, you guys could tag your posts with and then we'll share them on our stories and it could be really, really fun. So if you're wearing a James somewhere, um, just do a quick pic and post it on Instagram with the James spotting tag and then we'll be sure to share it with everybody yeah. else. It'll be really fun. Yeah. And then we were talking about, and there's a new train spotting movie coming out. So that's sort of where I think the inspiration came from. But I was like, Rachel, well done. Yes. Good for you to come up with Yay, that. Rachel. We actually applauded her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're so excited. <laughs> Um, and then we got talking a little bit about if the two S's in the middle would be confusing. And we were talking about semantics. Yes. And, and grammar. So here we have our story for the week. Yeah. So really I, it made me think back to when we ran our first natural dyeing workshop here on the farm with Ash Alberg, who teaches natural dyeing. And all of their yarn is done with natural dyes, mm -hmm. which is different than I use organic, certified organic, but it's still a powder. Mm -hmm. Natural dyeing is with leaves and twigs and things like that, or yeah. flowers or whatever. Onion skins and mushrooms. So it was very <laughs> exciting. Ash was coming to teach natural dyeing. Unfortunately, I failed to realize that dyeing, when it comes to adding color to something has an E after the Y, mm -hmm. whereas dying, as in losing one's life, does not. So I put up my lovely ads on Facebook and they said, dying naturally on the farm, <laughs> except it was dying, dying. And at the time there was like an awful lot of press around assisted suicide and whatnot in Canada. Yeah. It was very confusing for people. <laughs> So we, we, didn't, we didn't get any calls, luckily. <laughs> Fix that up right away. There'll be no dying naturally on our farm. Okay. Just, Whatever that means. Just a point of how important. And we were charging 60 bucks. Like, yeah. It seems like a real bargain. <laughs> <laughs> just, you need to, your grammar and punctuation spelling. and spelling are very important. I literally, and I do it for a living, I had no idea it was spelled differently. It is. Yeah. Lesson learned. Glad yeah. to help you all out with that as well. Do not make that mistake. 
okay. Everybody thinks we're weird anyway. It's yeah. fine. All right. So that was so that's James spotting, and there's two S's in the middle yeah. of it, and dying has an E when yes. you're referring to adding color yes. to a fabric or anything else. I-N-G. Yes. Okay. And something that's not on our agenda on the list, but that you have there, I think you want to talk about? Well, it was actually my bookmark, but how can okay. you do this? <laughs> it was my bookmark so I could open to the movie. Okay. Let's tap quickly, okay. but you know about Diana's photo shoot if you follow us at all. Right. And uh, I was really concerned that there were no photos of her in the bonnet because I had put the scarf on first and the scarf went with the bonnet and then she took off and it was yeah. a whole, yeah. you know, we told about that story. But apparently there was a photo of her in just the bonnet and we love it. <laughs> we're she so excited. She is a goddess. <laughs> yes. For a she. Rock star Diana. And I just love her little Maryland style birthmark above her eye. I yeah. mean, she couldn't be any sweeter. And uh, yeah, so these, we got a few of the prints and things uh, right. in the shop. Not enough to really put it online yet. But when right. Ernest gets back from his vacation, we'll be ordering more. Yeah. So this is kind of the, this was the photo we were trying to get. Uh, with a scarf, and then you know she took off with the scarf, and yeah. hilarity ensued. And yes. All the the entire flock was exhausted by the end of it. It was worse than open farm day. <laughs> um, she just and kept running, and they were all following her. None of them knowing what where they were running from because it was attached to her. Yeah, she wasn't getting very far. No, <laughs> she couldn't get away from it. No, <laughs> poor thing. It's sounding an awful lot like animal animal torture, but it was only like five minutes, yeah. and then Ken was able to catch up with her, and yeah. she was like. What's happening? Uh, and he got the scarf off. And, and then we are talking about being frightened by a mohair scarf. Yeah. Yes. It was, nobody was at risk. No. <laughs> no sheep were harmed in the filming of that video. Right. Okay. Right. So anyway, these little, if you're local, the cute little Diana Prince, we have a few things. Uh, and of course we're thrilled. I mean, we just yeah. love this little sheep. And yeah. It's nice to see her getting her due. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, we really have rock star sheep. Yeah. Between James the, and Diana. She's the showbiz sheep. Yeah. Yeah. So... All right, so that's uh, so I didn't mean to insert that. No, that's fine. Too, it was that's actually why. just my book part, but <laughs> yeah, it's all okay. good. So now we uh, we have ask us anything. So right. we have quite a few uh, okay. questions. So Kath six one three, which is actually Catherine. She has asked us why we ended up on Pure Prince Edward Island instead of in Nova Scotia, since we're from Nova Scotia. And um, the answer to that is, is just the way that it happened. Um, we found the size of firm that we wanted to purchase on PEI. And at some point it did kind of go down to finances because the, the, at the time the, land, the price of land on Prince Edward Island was um, uh, quite reasonable compared to Nova Scotia. So the farmland in Nova Scotia is actually kind of being more and more concentrated as the province uh, you know, spreads out, the city spread out. And at the time we were purchasing, PEI still had quite a lot of wide open spaces and uh, the price was right and the size of the farm was right. So that's, that's why. And we wouldn't have done it just for those reasons. It was also, we've talked about this before, that we met with the Departments of Agriculture in the different provinces that we were looking for, and the people in the uh, Department of Agriculture and PEI were, seemed really great to work, work with, which they are. They were interested in innovative ideas, and um, they, they had programs for new farmers. So, that's, uh, so that was kind of the cherry on the top. Another shout out to PEI. Yeah, another one. So that's why. And uh, in the same question, uh, Catherine asked if, if we lived in Vaudreuil, Ken and I, in, when we were in Montreal, because we talked about the lake, uh, Lac Saint Louis. So, or so she thought we might have lived in Hudson, but it was actually in Vaudreuil where we lived. So for anybody that knows Quebec geography, now you know where where, yeah. where we were, right on the lake. Same there. lake, though. Sure, same, sure enough. It's same lake. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if Catherine has also run her boat aground. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, hopefully not. Okay, so then many have. <laughs> yes. Fran one 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 two asked if Ken is still knitting because we haven't mentioned Ken's knitting lately. And yes, he is. He took a little bit of a hiatus in the the midst of the summer, but he is uh, picking up his knitting again and has been knitting uh, every morning with his coffee, trying to get another cowl done for his one. Cowl, not cow, cowl, <laughs> done for his sister that has yet to receive a cowl. Okay. So he's knitting, and um, what did he talk about? He wanted to do some other, we should make him make the moose hat. Hmm. Yeah, he can do that. He had, a hat, he had a hat on this weekend that he knit, 
because he was doing hats too. But Let's get them on to color work. Yeah, we'll get them on to color work. Okay. And then Ann R33 asked about what our favorite bases are for I think it's sweaters. Annie. Annie R33. Sorry, Annie yeah. R33. And uh, we, it's hard to choose what our favorites are. It depends on the project, which is the other part of her question. So it does depend on the project. Yeah. So for sure, natural fibers. Oh, yes. We knit mostly with our own yarn now. Yes. So that's... Uh, Which that doesn't kind of pill, and that would be one of the main reasons we right. would be, have trepidation about using anyone else's yarn. Yeah. Or a blend that yeah. contains any amount of microfiber or anything like that. Mm -hmm. we, we, it's been our experience that that tends to pill. And pills don't bother some people. No, but they just get the gleaner out and they're happy yeah, to do that every time they fine. wear it. Yeah, that's fine too. <laughs> that's not us. No. So, uh, so, yeah. So right now, Jennifer's knit a lot with our lace. Yep, I love that one. This is worsted. I love the worsted. I'm about to do something with Erin coming up in the next few weeks. Right. I'm doing a sweater. Joe Bat's arm is with worsted. Um, I haven't done a sweater with lace. And I don't know. Maybe I'll do something light and airy. Oh. You've also done ranunculus. Yeah. Work. And I mean, our lace is a little bit more like a light fingering. So yeah. you do make some ground with it. It's not like knitting with a light lace. Yeah. So you'd be going forever. Yeah. I it's find a it two ply, really fast. Actually. 500 yards for 80 yeah. grand. So fine, but not the finest yeah. lace you can get. For yeah. Sure. And so. then, you know, we love the silk mohair, which we don't make, but we like to throw that at some stuff like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, it's really fun to work with. And the scarf that Diana was wearing uh, was a project. I really enjoyed too. Right. And there are some really cool sweaters and stripey yes. patterns with mohair lace blended with something else. You can do yeah. a lot of really cool stuff with this mohair lace. We carry the Rowan one. Yeah. So that's kind of a fun thing that we like to throw at stuff too. Yeah. Then I've knit, so we don't have a favorite basically, but I've also knit with a, a blend, uh, a wool alpaca blend where we bought the alpaca fiber to spin from uh, Janet. Yeah. And so we, we actually kind of love it all. Yeah, and the bulky, like if you want a really squishy hat yeah. or some really cozy fingerless mitts, I showed those ones, the landslide ones by yeah. Mary Shannon. And we probably wouldn't get a, a sweater with bulky. No. Well, you could maybe. Um, it would but be an outdoor. Yeah, yeah I mean, sure. be, yeah. you could do a really loose one, like the one Bond, our friend Bond yes. did. Yeah, yes. that was done in bulky. It was yeah. cool. So it's just whatever. We love it all. Yeah. And I think just as long as you get the fabric that you desire mm -hmm. out of the yarn that you're using, then you're good to go. And I would encourage people to try knitting with different bases because some people, you get stuck in a groove for a while. Yeah. Like you just knit with the uh, Yeah, everything doesn't type. have to be fingering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we're kind of uh, all, like, we'd like to try it all. Yeah. I think we get inspired by different combinations, and it could mm -hmm. be anything on any given day, let's right. face it. Right. Uh, and then the needle size I used on my ranunculus was a part two to that one, and I used a five and a half on the first one, on the gray one, uh, because I felt I knit so loose that it would be work out, which it did. Mm -hmm. um, but on the second one, on the amethyst brooch one, I used the six, which is what's called for in the pattern, and that was cool too. Right. Yeah, but right. I used a very fine yarn compared to what a lot of people have knit their ranunculi with. Um, but I didn't mind that. You know, the six was certainly, it was a very gauzy fabric, but that mm -hmm. was exactly what I was looking mm -hmm. for. So that was all good. But many people have knit ranunculus with stuff as thick as an air and weight. Right. Um, and it's just a totally different effect. But that's kind of one of the things that's so cool about that pattern. It looks good in every yarn. Mm -hmm. um, however, it is a one size fits all. So you just have to be aware of Somebody what should doing. do a vertical, a vertical tasting of... <laughs> what a ranunculus they could use a yarn yeah, because you, you knit could, it in every base going up yeah and they're so different you could have more than one yeah you have two I ha everybody has at least two yeah if you've knit it once you've knit it twice that seems to be the way <laughs> like everyone I think Rachel might be contemplating a third like yeah. it just it's you can do it in four days yeah yeah you really perfect. could I mean yeah. if you're a, a more um crazy knitter than me you could probably do it in two days yeah wow yeah so, so everyone needs one yeah <laughs> two. right so i think that that's uh it for the agenda right 
for today. It's been a lot. I, don't yeah. know. I feel like we've gone around the merry go I feel like I need a drink of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything we missed? I don't think so. I know. We always say goodbye and then talk for another 15 minutes. So I know. I, no, I don't think so. I just would love to see photos with the Instagram posts and stories with the James spotting tag. Yeah. That's making my life right now. Yeah. It's yeah. really fun. Yeah. So we you showed it on Instagram stories. And I did one this got morning one. already. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's great. So I uh, hope you had fun with our podcast. Yeah, and, and uh, join fun. our Ravelry group. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because we love the subscribe. Yeah, we're, we're heading for 5,000 now. Yeah, so that's, that's our where, next big goal. Yeah, that's the next goal. And uh, it's taken us a year to get 3,000. We're hoping the next 3,000 go a little bit quicker, <laughs> but uh, we're having fun and it's all good. So yeah. thank you. Good. So thanks very much, and we'll see you the next time. In two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.